Tis I. Hey everyone, glad to see you back, glad to see you looking fresh, and welcome back to the humongous retrospective here on my channel. Today we tackle the very first in the Freddy Fish franchise with Freddy Fish and the case of the missing kelp seeds. Now, roll the intro. <laughs> Sam. <laughs> sure thing, Freddy. They're wonderful. Gotta go, Sam. <laughs> Bye, Freddy. <laughs> Whoa! So, Freddy Fish is a girl fish and all her ventures star her and her best friend, Luther, which is a little green guy. And they go on a series of quests. And the very first in their franchise is about the missing kelp seeds, which are held by Grandma Grouper. And her job, I guess, is to hold the kelp seeds, which hold the lives of all of the fish in the ocean. The kelp seeds have gone missing. The plants are dying. If we don't get these kelp seeds back, all of the fish are going to die. That seems like a pretty big responsibility. And this is by far the darkest game in all of the Humongous Entertainment saga. Like, it's not even close. Like, the stakes of this game are monumental. Like, we need to get these seeds back or the fish are going to die. This is such a huge step up from just being lost on the moon. <laughs> They're trying to enter a parade. We are leveled up like crazy. But to successfully complete our mission, we go along and we start to find bottles. Now these bottles contain where the next bottle is. And if we find enough bottles, it'll lead us back to the kelp treasure. These bottles actually are the very first instance in a humongous game of branching pathways. So multiple times throughout the game, you can find a bottle and it'll be different from someone else who plays the game. And it's a really, really cool way to enhance replayability. So you can replay this game and have different puzzles to solve than like if I played this game for the first time. Now I won't be going through all the pathways because I want you to be able to play this game and experience the different pathways for yourself. So I'll be going through my pathways. Much like the rest of this entire series I'll be doing, I don't want to spoil everything that these games have to offer. Just a fun overview and if you play these games, just know that you might get completely different puzzles. But I will point out different scenarios going forward throughout this game and where it can kind of diverge. So our first bottle leads us to an actual whale bone so we can head there but on the way we will run into someone who's having a tough time mrs halibut is stuck in a hole trying to get her little guppy out we being the good fish we are of course we're going to help out this family in need along the way we can grab purple shell i'm sure that won't be of use <laughs> later at all and we will be back to help this fish who is currently stuck under a rock. Who knows how we got there. That's not the problem. We'll be back to help. So we head on and lo and behold we find a plank of wood. Which is the perfect size to go help the stuck fish underneath the rock. Voila puzzle solved. Uh, this is a big point of these early Junior Adventure games. Where yeah the puzzles are starting to evolve. But they're still pretty simple. And the solution is typically right next to the problem or it's very specifically placed in a very easy spot to remember. Now these games are not supposed to be hard by any means, but this one seems especially gratuitous because it, it literally is the next screen and you can immediately go back and solve the problem. But for some reason, Mrs. Halibut decided to stick herself back in the hole like I didn't just tell her I would be back to help the guppy. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> so 
So we help them out. We get ourselves a purple sea urchin, which is the cash money of this entire franchise. Pure cash money. Purple sea urchins. I remember playing this game as a kid. Purple sea urchins, that's so cool. And learning that sea urchins are like a real thing. Like, that's even cooler. And I remember my third grade trip to the seacoast. We had this big thing. Third grade in my school is like this famous trip. Every year, at the end of the year, the third graders get to go to the seacoast. And they get to go to the a big science center and get to learn about different sea life. And it was a, it was a big deal. And so I remember being there, learning about sea life and sea urchins. And I'm like, are they purple? And they're like, oh, we have green ones here. The purple ones are only on the West Coast. And I'm like, darn. <laughs> That's really unfortunate. I was really looking forward to seeing a purple sea urchin, but I still have not seen one in real life. But I'll get there one day. Next on our journey, we surface and we meet a crab in a cage. His name is Fiddler Crab and he is a Fiddler Crab and he is caged for what crime? Murder. He's a murderous fiddler crab. Why is he murderous? Well, let me tell you what. Fiddler crab has the gall to sing to you. Fiddler crab, what's wrong? Oh me, oh my, oh me, oh my. How did I get in this cage? I must get out of this cage. Please help me get out. And I'll give you my fishing pole. That hurt to hear. I remember being better as a kid, but let me tell you what, it is not pleasant on the ears to hear him sing these songs. And he has the gall to tell me if I let him out, he'll give me his murder weapon? I'm a fish. You're fishing right now? What do you think is happening? Why are you caged up? I know why. But we're friendly enough. We can go help him out. We can go find the key next to this manta ray. We'll talk about him. He has a whole other story to get to. We can get to him. We can go back, help the murderous crab out the cage, and he'll sing to us to his heart's content, and we get a fishing pole, which, due to splitting pathways, is useless to us. And to be honest with you, I do not remember at all what the purpose of the fishing pole even is in a pathway that it's useful for. This is one of the few times in a humongous game that I zero memory of what this thing does but we have it and now we just have a murder weapon on our side which is great okay so we can go see ray we also see that there's a clam in a net and there's a big old pearl right there that's pretty enticing right we want to get that pearl we can't get to the net for some reason even though it's clearly like not that skinny like we can just slip through especially luther he's a pretty small guy but ray has a solution to our problem being the shady salesman he is, he leans in and tells us, he's like, hey, you need the super duper duka buka poly gizmo. The super duper duka buka poly gizmo. Let me repeat that. The super duper duka buka poly gizmo is what we need to get through this net. That name is so crazy. Like, people want to say, like, oh, Super Califragilistic Expialidocious is the craziest made up fun fantastical name of all time. I've never had to write that word down to memorize it. Super Duper, Duka Buka, Polygizmo. I've had to write down and memorize because of how ridiculous it is. And what is it for? It opens the net a little wider. You telling me we're not strong enough to slightly open the net a little bit? I thought it, like, would lift the net as a kid. Like, oh, this net is so heavy that us as fish, like, we just can't do it. It just stretches it out a little bit. That's what the Super Duper Duka Buka Poly Gizmo does. It stretches nets. Why? So, to get this Super Duper Duka Buka Poly Gizmo, we need a clock. I guess it's a trope on the old, like, salesman clock situation. Like, hey, kid, you want to buy a watch? Like, it's that joke. But we need to give him a clock for it? Fine. Where do we get a clock? We go to the junkyard. What do we do in the junkyard? Well, we get to the junkyard and there's a dogfish in the way. What does the dogfish need? He needs a bone. Where do we get the bone? The graveyard of the whale to get the bottle. Everything's wrapping up pretty nice. We get the bottle. Life's good. Loop around. It tells us we need to go to the graveyard anyway. Cool, cool, cool. So we go to the graveyard. We need to get a bottle here. We need to get the clock here. We need to give the bone to the dog. Everything's wrapped up nicely. And then it tells us we need to go to the Skull Caverns and go on the eye on the left. Now, they don't specifically say the Skull Caverns, but it's clearly a Skull Cavern. And we'll get back to that. In the process of helping Gabby the Guppy, we got a purple shell. 
And with the purple shell, we can give that to the sleepy hermit crab, because for some reason he found a, a luminescent glow-in-the-dark shell, which glows forever, and he can't stop it. And I don't know why he hasn't left yet, but we give him the shell, we get the glowy shell, and then we can also go on to see the king, King Crab. At this point, I realize there's a lot of crabs in this game. Like, there's the Fiddler Crab, which is the murderer. There's the Hermit Crab, which is too silly to move out of his glow-in-the-dark house and he can't sleep. And now there's the King Crab. So we're talking to him, and he's like, hey. Once my kingdom was abundant with kelp. But since the Squid Father stole Grandma Grouper's kelp seeds, we don't have enough for everybody. Luther and I are looking for Grandma Grouper's kelp treasure. I do hope you find it soon. And I'm like, hey, King Crab, why don't you do anything to help? Why is it my responsibility to help all the fish not die? That's your job. You're the king here. Why aren't we protecting the treasure here in the, in the king's castle? You have guards out front. There's so much going on here. And I already mentioned, like, who stole the treasure with these two sharks that kind of follow you around all game. And when you pick up a bottle, they'll show up and give a little cutscene about what they're going on. They answer to the Squid Father. Very obvious reference to the Godfather. We'll see him later. Okay, so we have a glow-in-the-dark shell, which we can take to the Skull Cavern. But I wanted to point out the King's Castle. You see all these pearls here. And the whole thing with the Super Duper Duper Duca Poly Gizmo is to get a pearl. And in one of the situations... One of the bottles will say, go to the king's castle. And I wanted to point out that if you come here, they're all pearls. But if we come back later, sometimes it'll be swapped out for a bottle. Uh, it's kind of a safe way to be like, so you can't get bottles early. You can't like skip points. It's kind of sloppy. I mean, it makes sense. This game came out in 1994. So I'll give it a pass. And they did a lot better with it later on in the Humongous games. So in the split pathways first time, there's going to be some bumps in the road. I just kind of wanted to point that out. But also wanted to point out how negligent this king crab is even further. The fact that a shark snuck in, stole a pearl, put a bottle there that clearly doesn't belong there with a note in it. He never checks it. He'll sit there and complain all day that, oh, we got to find the treasure. But if there's a bottle right there, he doesn't even think to look at it about a shark that snuck in, stole a pearl, put a bottle there, and is like, I'll give you this bottle if you give me a new pearl. But because it's not there, because of that, the playthrough, we don't even have to get the super duper duka duka poly gizmo. So we go to the school cavern, we meet uh, another guy with murderous intent, Eddie the eel, he wants to eat us if we don't give him something. Luckily, Grandma Grouper gave us a peanut butter and jellyfish sandwich at the beginning of the game. So we can give that off to him. We can go in the Skull Cavern. We can use the Glow in the Dark Shell. We can find ourselves a bottle. And that'll tell us where to go. Other points in this game, there's a deep cavern, which sometimes has a bottle in it. And there's also a place with show tunes, which has a frog and an octopus. And they do shows, I guess. All of these Freddy Fish games have a little show area with some fun animations in it. They get better or worse depending on your opinions as they go on. But this is one that's pretty much way out of the way. This is where you use the purple sea urchins to get through the gate. To be able to go see the show. And then we can find the treasure chest on a sunken ship. And then we get the treasure chest. Life's good. We we talk with the sharks who went and saw the squid father. Which is a big squid pet and a, a catfish. Ha -ha. Uh, and then the sharks remember where it is. It's in the sunken ship. And bada bing bada boom. Life's good. We spread the seeds everywhere. Passed by Fiddler Crab. Luckily, we're on his good side now because, you know, we're safe from his fishing tendencies. And we give it to Grandma Grouper, and that's the game. So this game, I've had a lot more experiences with than the two putt-putt games we've talked about. This game, I did play a lot as a kid. I remember my cousin had it, and so every time I went to her house, I'd want to play it because it's a game I recognized and I really liked it. Again, this game is the darkest by any standard of the humongous games, which is crazy. Uh, because when it comes to like levels of difficulty, I would say Freddy Fish is one step above Putt Putt, but it's not the highest. Like we go up in ranks as they get introduced, and Freddy Fish is definitely a little bit harder than Putt Putt is, but it's not like the highest. So it's interesting to have such a dark story in a game that's not that in depth. 
Also, this game took me about 45 minutes to play through. Again, I knew all the puzzles. I knew where to go. I very much could speed run this game with my eyes closed. It feels like I know this game kind of inside and out, except for the fishing pole thing, which I don't remember what that's for, but I'm sure it would come to me pretty quickly if I needed to remember. But yeah, uh, an excellent first advancement into the new graphics uh, no longer are we pixelated. We're much more cartoonish looking. It looks more and more like a moving cartoon. And to this day, I adore the art style, what Humongous Entertainment was able to do. With this game and all games going forward, it just got better. And I love this game. It's not my favorite in the Freddy Fish game, but it's the best game we've covered thus far. Uh, it is better than the last two putt putt games. So absolutely, if you're interested in this, give this a try. It's on Steam. I missed the summer sale. Um, these games go on sale every now and then. Uh, I wanted to get this video out for that, but I'm sure there'll be another time with another sale that I'll be able to point you in the right direction. But follow their socials, uh, Humongous Entertainment, and they're, they're posting whenever there's sales and stuff. And it's, it's always nice to hear from a company that uh, I've loved for a long time. So that was Freddy Fish in the case of the Stolen Conchell. This one I think was very popular when I was a kid, so you might have played this one already. But if not, what do you think about it? Uh, you're going to play it, go forward, find those other pathways, like be able to use the Super Duker Buka Duka Polygizmo, uh, be able to figure out what that fishing pole does. That's up to you now. So that'll about do it for me. Thank you so very much for watching. And as always, like this if you like this, subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you at some point.